Even though many epidemics and pandemics begin in Asia, the HIV virus and AIDS disease is said to have begun in Africa. And although there is no known origin of HIV, the current and most agreed upon theory is that the virus started within chimpanzees. The virus seems to transmit from chimpanzees to humans in close encounters. For example, the, con the consumption of chimpanzee meat. With this cross transmission, people began to contract the HIV virus, which would inevitably give way to the deadly disease of AIDS. The HIV virus is very dangerous because a lot of people don't know when they've contracted it. It shows little to no symptoms at all. It can have some flu-like symptoms, but typically by then it's turned into the disease of AIDS. The disease is transmitted through sexual contact as well as sharing needles and drug use. In the 1980s, artists began to speak out about how the government was treating those with AIDS. This is because many of those infected were gay men. The disease was called the gay plague. There was no funding that was given by the government and it was not discussed. Artists like Felix Gonzalez Torres took to places that all could see artwork so they could reach the message. This is why he started to do artwork on giant bulletin boards throughout the cities and streets to catch the eyes of those who can help make change. In Gonzalez Torres' work, untitled Portrait of Ross in LA, 1991, he creates a pile of candy that is 171 pounds. This was the same weight as his partner Ross, who was HIV positive. The audience was invited to take the candy. With this pile, it would shrink. The process was to act out the metaphor for the withering body of Ross. When he died, there was nothing left of him. And when the candy was gone, there was nothing left but the empty floor. In Dave Fujinorik's untitled One Day This Boy, 1990-1991, he draws a portrait of himself as a boy. Around him is written a story of how one day he will become strong, even though he will be pushed down by society and by politics throughout life. He writes from experience with the U.S. government in mind. He discusses how the government did not help him or those with AIDS during his lifetime when they should have. In 1992, he died of an AIDS complication. Like the United States, in Africa, it is typically a heterosexual disease. This means that women can pass AIDS on to their children during childbirth. Also, a difference between Africa and the United States is that the women are using art for coping instead of as protest. In 2005, the Kiskana project was formed by a group of African women to create an altarpiece influenced by Renaissance art, such as Matthias Grunwald's Isenheim altarpiece, to portray their life and hardships and to bring comfort to the community with their religious undertones. The altarpiece depicts women and their families all struggling with the social effects of AIDS. Though all artworks do not look to religion for comfort in their work, some look for education. This is why there's Taboo by Salani Nujoyasa. Her work depicts a, a nurse helping a woman give birth and this child will have AIDS. The social context of this work is kind of hard to miss. AIDS affects many different countries and many different societies in different ways. However, the fact of the matter is there is still no vaccine or cure. Many people die every day. Although the numbers are, have much improved since the 1980s, there's a lot of work that needs to be done. That's why fundraising is still so important for the AIDS Foundation. And hopefully one day this will no longer be an emerging epidemic and maybe can fall into the category of smallpox.